Hope everybody can hear me. If there's any problems, um, just please put a note in the chat box. Or if I am difficult to understand, please let me know. So I wanted to talk about TEAL today, the Essential Electronic Agriculture Library, um, which is a database of over 450 journals in agriculture and related sciences. Um, TEAL, to, we are just about to release in March our um, updated version of TEAL, so if you're already a subscriber, the update with the 2015 materials will be available in March, and our new base set will be 1993 through 2015. We'll have over 550,000 articles. They're all in PDF from 450 journals, and over 90 publishers participate um, in TEAL. Um, it covers agriculture and many other related sciences, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. We update it annually. It's not an online product. Rather, it's a database that each inst eligible institution is able to mount locally on their local area network or on a standalone computer. And then it is available to the campus, but it doesn't require internet connectivity. Um, we update it annually. We most of the vast majority of the articles are in English because that is um, the language that most scientific um, research is published in. But we do have some French and Spanish journals um, with um, articles or and or abstracts in French and Spanish, and we actually have one Portuguese journal. So um, we are looking to expand that a little bit, but it is the nature of what is available. TEAL um, for a long time had its own eligibility, but we have recently um, aligned our eligibility with the Research for Life group, so programs like Agora that you heard the other day. And um, you can check um, at um, the Agora website in order to see which countries and institutions are eligible. But we are always um, happy to answer any questions that you may have about that. So as I said, over 90 publishers donate their journals to Teal. And they are really, all of them are our partners in this process because it wouldn't be possible to make Teal available without all of their help. And so this is a major donation that they are making to allow institutions in low-income countries to have access to um, research literature. If, you, if an institution was to subscribe on their own to all the journals in Teal, it would cost well over a million dollars a year. Um, we do have a small charge that we have to that we have for everyone just to cover some of our costs because we have to update and, and maintain the database on an annual basis. And um, so the base set costs approximately $5,000 and our annual updates are $650. But from time to time we do have funding that allows some help in purchasing the base sets. You can see below some of our publisher partners and um, they include some major publishers like Elsevier, Taylor & Francis, CABI, um, the National um, Research Council from Canada. So there's quite, there's quite a good number of um, um, publishers that participate in TEAL. And you can see a full list of them on either on our, we on our website, which is www.teal.org. We cover quite a range of agriculture and related science areas. So everything from general agriculture and agricultural engineering to economics and development to environment and ecology to nutrition, a little bit of human medicine, but mostly um, veterinary medicine, um, animal science, plant and soil science. So we try to cover the very, very wide range of agriculture.
when Teal started back in 1999, we started, and I thought everybody enjoyed seeing this, we started as a CD-ROM set. So you had a, you needed a desktop computer, and you had a tower, as you can see here to the right, with over 200 um, CDs. And so the, there was a basic um, indexing that you could search on the computer, and when you chose your article, it told you what CD you had to use in the computer in order to view the article. Over time, we moved to um, what we call LAN Teal, which, allowed, which delivered Teal on a hard drive. Um, it still required software to be installed not only um, on every, well, not only, on every computer that was using Teal. So it was a bit of a wor work for an institution, for instance, to make sure that they had um, the Teal software, lo um, for instance, loaded on every um, computer in a computer lab. But we have moved on, and Teal now comes on this um, mini computer or a small footprint computer. Um, we redesigned this about three years ago, and we actually rebuilt Teal from, from scratch and using more, more, um, more up-to-date software. It's almost all open source software. And so when you receive this box, everything you need to run Teal is on it. Um, all the hardware, software, the PDFs of the articles, all of the indexing. And you simply have to um, plug it into a local area network or a standalone um, computer in order to make it run. We hope most people have a local area network that it can be used with because then everyone on campus has access to all of the material in Teal. We do not allow Teal to um, be shared over the internet and that is simply the nature of our agreement with the publishers and it's also part of what distinguishes us from Agora, which is an online system. So we consider ourselves partners that each provide somewhat different approaches um, to accessing the agricultural literature. Our collection is much smaller, but doesn't require the internet connectivity, where Agora is a much, much larger collection with approximately 6,000 journals that um, does require you to be able to access the internet and download the PDFs of the articles. So I'm going to just take us through a few slides now to show you how basically how Teal works. And um, then after that, we will move to a live um, demonstration of Teal. And as you, if you have any suggestions for searches you would like to see us do, we can, we're happy to try to do that. So with um, the teal, basic teal, what you see is that we have a search box towards the bottom of the screen here, which um, we can put in keywords. And they, it can be a single word, it can be a number of um, different terms, and you can use um, what we call Boolean operators, and, or, and, and not, in order to help um, shape your search. In this case, you can see that um, they have taken a general term, a general crop like cassava, and they are combining it with brown streak. And brown streak is in quotation marks so that it is treated as a phrase. By may, having a more specific search, you're likely to get more relevant results. If you would use a search that was just cassava or farms, very general terms, you're, you will get a large number of results. And that would then um, make it so that there would be many results that wouldn't be relative to what you are really looking for. Once you've done the search, as you can see, um, we get a um, sorry, we get a results page, and that shows you. Um, as you can see here, you can only see the top result, but there are a total of 25 results for this search that was wheat disease. Um, and you can use, on the left-hand side, you will see 
um, a number of boxes that we call facets, which you can use to refine and narrow your search. So they are publication year, and this allows you to put in a specific year or a range of years. It's subject, so you can narrow down in subjects, um, and we'll look at some of this more closely during the live demonstration. You can narrow by language, by document type, and that is because the vast majority the vast majority of the materials in here are journal articles, but there are some non-journal research materials in here also, so that's where document type can be helpful. Um, also, it talks about from the results, you can choose journal, which shows you the different journals that have the articles that are part of the results, and you can look just at a specific journal or at a specific collection. And these all help you narrow down and refine the number of results. So if you had a large number of results, you could get a more specific and relevant set of results. You can also notice um, at the top of the box where it says all fields and where next to the search box that says wheat disease, that besides searching all fields, you can search title, author, and subject. So each of these gives us some options for conducting a search to find more relevant materials for what we need for our research. Um, you choose your articles then from a list of search results. The results are displayed as a list of citations, and each citation gives you some key information. In blue, you will see the article title, then you will see the authors, the journal, and a very short snippet of the abstract. By clicking on the article title, you can open up the full citation for more details, or you can click on the green box that says full text and go directly to the article. But we'll first look at the citation, and this is the full citation. Um, so you see the entire article, you see the journal that it is published in, along with um, the information about the specific issue and page numbers. It has the authors. When we know the author's affiliations, they are included. There is an abstract, and in this case, it's only displaying part of the abstract, but where you see more in blue, if you click on that, you can see the entire abstract, because sometimes they're quite lengthy. Um, it goes on to show, talk about what language the article is in, but I think what's really interesting, if you go down to subjects and they are in blue, it suggests some other subjects that would be helpful um, in your search, and you can actually click on these because they're hyperlinked, and they will bring you directly to the results of that specific search. Below there, you'll see descriptors and identifiers, and those may also be helpful in helping you refine your search or conduct other searches that are relevant to the information you're looking for. You will see right underneath the, the title of the article, you will again see the green box that says full text, and you can click on that and go to the article from this page as well as the citation page. Um, so then that br brings up the full article, and the articles open very quickly because they're stored locally on the TEAL um, hardware right at your institution. So you don't have issues that can sometimes happen if you don't have a robust internet connection where it can be very slow to open up um, an article. And that is one of the, I think that is a plus for TEAL, especially if your institution is located in a rural area without robust or um, regular internet connectivity. As I said, um, it is possible to narrow your search if your results are, um, are, you have too many results or if they're not relevant enough. And Definitely using the box such searchable fields such as title, author, and subject, and the new facet features can be very helpful. And when you search an author, it's probably best to search their last name. Uh, and the more unusual the name, 
actually the most likely the likely you are to find the specific article you're looking for if you search a really generic name like John Smith you're likely to get more results for that so it depend the more unusual the author's name the more likely you are to find it to find a specific um, author that you're looking for you can also browse in our collection and you can browse by um, journal and you and what you're seeing and you can browse the journal list alphabetically by language or by subject and so in this case um, you can see that we're browsing um, the journals alphabetically and we chose um, agriculture ecosystems and environment and then once we have chosen that journal then we see the um, years of publication and if we open those up we see it says the volume and the issue number and then the articles for that issue are located below it and you can go directly to the article um, from the links um, in here so if you have a known journal that you're really interested in this can be helpful or if you have a specific citation and you know that it is in this so is it you have a citation for an article in agriculture ecosystems and environment and you know that is in volume 140 um, issue 1 and 2 2011 this might be a quicker way than going through searching um, and as I said so you can definitely go and you can browse through here and expand to see the journal content other things you can do are when you are in when you have a list of citations you will see that there is a little box if you remember um, to the right that you can check that says bookmark and you can bookmark whichever citations that you're interested in and then if you go click on the bookmark bar it will take you to your list of the um, citations that you chose you can export those to different kinds of um, citation management software such as Zotero, Mendeley, and EndNote. So that can be very handy for helping you build um, your research article and the, and the citations that you'll need for it. You can also simply just download or print those citations. We know that sometimes people are in situations where they're working in computer labs with a limited amount of time and they may have a large number of results that they want to review so they could bookmark all of the citations um, print them out or download them to a flash drive and take them with them for review later it's also possible to review your search results sometimes when I'm searching doing a lot of related searches I can't quite remember um, what searches I've done so I can go back and look at my search history and I can actually just if I need to reinitiate a past search I can simply click on it again and it'll bring up um, the original results this only works for your current session um, we don't have a fully developed um, sign-in system because of being offline it's, it's it would be difficult for us to we wouldn't be able to help people if they lost passwords and also then this just keeps um, the amount of memory we need for the teal system um, easier to use if we don't do this so it's just for the current session that you're in that you can look at the search history we do provide tips on searching we have a help section so um, definitely there's information about how to use things like boolean operators and other search tools and as you can see here it talks about using and or not combining groups of terms and using, using parentheses or quotation marks um, in, in the process of doing that so the this can be very helpful information and every teal set um, does have this type of information in the help section 
And if you need more help, there is a complete help section which um, allows you to go through and talks about browsing, searching, how to, um, how to use citation, how to access the full text um, files and things of that nature. So if you have had, if you're either getting started on your own or if you have been to a workshop and have forgotten how to do things, it's all right there available to you on the teal set. And as we said, you only need to be able to plug it into a standalone computer or the local area network um, to access all of Teal and have it at your fingertips. So I'm going to now move to the, um, to the live demo, and then we can see things a little bit more clearly as we go through this. So as you can see, there's a, other than what we showed in the slide, there's a little bit more to the Teal opening page, um, home page than there is. Um, obviously, we have the search box, and we have um, the ability to choose to search all fields, title, author, and subject. Uh, along the top, there is a button for home, for browse, Sorry, your screen sorry. is still coming up. Your screen is just about to come up oh, in our mind. Sorry. For example. I will stop. I don't see it yet. Thank you. Okay, let's do that. Teal page. Um, and as I said, we have our search box as I showed you the slide for. If you look across the top to the right of Teal, you can see there's buttons for home, for browse, for about, and for help. And over on the right, you see bookmarks and history. And you can see that I am signed in. We do have people just put in any email address they want to use, um, but you don't have to put in a password or anything. And this just, uh, it's turned into a registration number, and it just allows us to know how often a user comes in and, and, how, and how long that they're searching. We don't collect much data, just a little bit. And you'll see across the bottom that you can look at academic journals. We also, as I said, have some non-research collection, um, mostly from the Gates Foundation and other from projects that they have funded or sponsored or research they have spon sponsored. So among them, there are quite a few um, documents from IFPRI, for instance, and ILRI and the World Bank. AGRA, um, the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, is participating, and then Ethiopian Agricultural Transformation Agency. We hope that we'll have more of these re non-journal research collections coming up in the next year. But I'm going to do a search. Has a, did anyone have a particular search that they would like to see? Okay. So I'm going to, even though I would say in general I wouldn't do a general search, I'm going to just do a general one just to show you what happens um, and the kind of results you get from it and what we can do with it. Oops, it didn't like me. I have to sign back in. That's because I signed in quite a while ago. Here we go. So as you can see, by searching something very, very general like rice, I get over almost 13,000 results, which personally I don't think I want to sort through all of them. Um, they come up in order by relevance, but you can change that um, to put the, make, have them in order by date, by author name, and that's the first author or title. And also you can display more um, per page if you would like. But I th to search through and kind of sort through 13,000 articles to decide which may be relevant to what I want to do isn't probably going to be very helpful and will be very time consuming. So then we have our facets at the left hand side here that we can use to um, narrow and refine the results. So as I mentioned, it's possible to look at um, publication year, and I can put in whatever I want. So I could put in just maybe I want the most recent two years that are available. 
And as you see, it only takes a minute. And so we went down from almost 1,300 articles to 1,653. So that definitely decreased the number of articles. I can continue to use that um, set of dates, but I can also get rid of it very easily and go back to the original search results. Subject is a really, really useful one. Obviously, there are things that um, make sense. I might be really interested in varieties of rice or in genes involving rice. And so in that case, by looking at varieties, I've brought it down to just over 1,000 articles. I can continue and add other pieces, like I can say I only want the English articles, even though that's most of them. I could look specifically at a journal. So let's say I really want it to focus on um, articles published in the African Journal of Agricultural Research, I could simply look at the 24 journals, 24 articles in that journal. And so it's combined three different um, facets in this, um, subject, journal, and language, in order to go down from almost 13,000 articles to 24, which is a much smaller and easier to um, to evaluate the number of um, articles. Right now I will say the one facet we do not have is by country, although you can use country or an overall region um, to in, in your search and if it is mentioned in the in the title and the abstract, then it will come up because you can see from the very first example here, it talks about um, Western Kenya. So if you had included Kenya as part of your search, then it would have um, definitely found this article. We hope at some point in the future to be able to add um, geography as, as a facet. It's just slightly complicated because there's always a changing, changing country names or changing number of countries. And what we do not have right now is any subsets of countries. So provinces or states or cities are not um, information that we trace. If I choose this first article, as you can see, as soon as I put my, my pointer on it, it turns a little bit darker. And if I click on it, it brings me to the full um, citation page. And as I mentioned, the abstract, we put in a few lines of it, but they're often much longer. And so if you click on that blue more, you can see the entire abstract. As I also had said with the subjects, these are all hyperlinked. And so I definitely could um, go right, click one of those and have it conduct that search. But if I really wanted to look at this article, I've reviewed all the information in the citation. I know that's what I want. I can go directly to opening up the article and you can see how quickly it opens up. And you do have the full article and you can print it out or you can um, download it to let's say a flash drive and if you're in a computer lab and take it um, to your own computer if you have one. You also can from this page as well as the citation page you can bookmark um, the citation. You can print it, as you can see from here, or you can choose to export it. And as you can see, we have four options here about, about exporting the citation. I'm going back to my results page just with the 24. And as I'm reviewing them, oops, doesn't like this. Hmm. I don't know what it's doing. Um, but anyhow, I can click these different bookmark um, boxes and I can save 
the, the whole group of citations, whichever ones I want to pick. And then it will save them and I can view them up here at the top through bookmarks. And for some reason that wasn't quite working and it's something I'll follow up because this isn't quite, the version I'm using isn't quite released yet, so apparently we have a little bit of a problem there. I can also go in and look at my history and I can see um, all of the different searches and that I've done and all the refinements that I've done using the, um, the facets. So it's very easy to review and it also tells me the number of results that I had in each of these. But I can clear it, but once I end my session it will also be cleared. I'm going to go back to the home page if everybody is clear about searching and um, looking, reviewing citations, um, refining the search. If there's any questions, this would probably be a good time to type them in and we'll come back to them in a few minutes. But I'm going to move to searching to talk about browsing a little bit. We actually can browse in several ways, and I think I showed in the slides about browsing academic journals. So I can go in and I can browse them in academic order, in alphabetical order, and if I find the one I want, I can click on the journal. I can look at, let's say I only want the current years, and I want to see volume 23, issue 1, and it gives me all of the articles that are in that issue. And if I was interested in the article on climate change, then I could go right to the um, citation, or I could choose to go directly to the full text, either here or from here, so that it would open up the article very quickly. Additionally, I can also look at journals by language, and this is really most helpful if you're interested in knowing what journals we have in French or Spanish. And I think that can be very helpful. The English list obviously is the longest, but it does allow you to browse through the journals. And then by subject or discipline. So those were, as in the slides, the, the group of different um, subject areas that we have. And if I wanted to look at entomology and pest control, then it would give me the journals that have that as their major subject. And once again, I can click on the journal. And then from there, go and look through the years and the issues. This is not, this is more time consuming if you're just looking for a subject area than searching, but this can be helpful it, um, if you have a citation or um, that you would like to use to find an article. But in addition, as you saw, besides academic journals, we have these three other research collections. And there, with, the, with the release next month, there will be 1,100 documents across these three collections. So with, we'll use as an example, because it's the largest, the Gates Foundation research. So you can see that it is possible to browse this, the, these research collections by geography, um, which I think a lot of people really like, so that I could go, if I was from Burkina Faso, I could go and look at all of the documents that are that talk about Burkina Faso. So as you can see, there's quite a list here. And once again, I can click directly on either the title to go to the citation or full text to go to the article. I can also look at some others. Um, language, um, which is the vast majority of these are in English. There's a few in French. Publication year. Commodities, which is very interesting. Um, and this is something that was important to the three re, um, organizations that have provided us with research collections. So we have crops um, and you know cereals, legumes, 
um, vegetation, and then we have different livestock. So that if I was really interested in banana, I could go and see all the documents in the Gates collection that are that deal with bananas, and it would be similar to be able to do this for the Agra or the AT action. And the final one is value chain. This one's a little bit different. Um, and this is something that can be of interest if you're looking from a more economics point of view where in the value chain different documents fall. So it can be agribusiness and post-harvest handling, the actual production or extension, and then there's cross-cutting issues, policies, and research development. And this, um, I don't know how many people will use this. This was something that, um, that the Gates Foundation found very important for identifying their documents. So those, and all of these browsing capabilities are possible for all of the um, three research collections. And these research collections are also part of the search. So you will be able, you will see some of those results in your searches. And as we mentioned, there is a help section. And just to show you a little bit more about this, as the slide says, we have some the basic areas um, in blue here, but you can go through and see that there is are all kinds of tips about um, putting together your search, um, using the facets, browsing, and this will be very helpful, I think, if people haven't had the opportunity to attend a workshop. Um, we have partners in Sub-Saharan Africa, ITOCA, the Information Training and Outreach Center for Africa, which for the past six years has have really done quite a bit of training, um, particularly in the focus countries that um, we are working in. Um, and they have also done some training in other countries throughout Africa. So some of you may have had a chance to attend a workshop where they really thoroughly introduced teal and agora and, and citation management. But if you haven't, you do have all of the basic tips you need for being able to effectively use um, teal. And here is the whole um, chart about using the Boolean operators, which is very, very helpful. So I think that those, that's the basics of how TEAL works. Um, and I think you've had a chance to see, you know, how we can do a search live and how we can refine those searches to um, locate more relevant articles. I would like to open this up now to questions. And if, um, or if anyone has a search that they would like us to do, we could do that. And I am going to switch back away from Teal, um, but we can go back in it if we need to.